Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. <coughs> so today's uh, old book teardown day. We're going to be tearing down an old book. Uh, the uh, silly job title, title for today is the Electron Enchanter. Today I'm the Electron Enchanter and we'll be tearing down this old book. Uh, it was written by John D. Ryder um, and it's titled Ele Engineering Electronics and it was published by McGraw-Hill it's got a note on it here. I, I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a Dewey Decimal Index or something. It says uh, 6213426G by the looks of it. Um, this is part of the Electrical and Electronic Engineering series from McGraw Hill. Uh, and it comes through the North Sydney Technical College. Uh, and it's been stamped cancelled. So perhaps they. Um, they stamped it when they, they sold it or, or whatever they've done. Uh, it's titled Engineering Electronics, as we said. And there's a, a great big uh, index here. Anyway, look, uh, I, won't, I won't yap about it now. We'll throw over the bench and let's have a look at it together. So here we are on the bench. Here's our book. Just uh, put our screwdriver out of the way there. Now... Uh, can you see that? Yes, you can. All right. So, um, as I said, it's the McGraw Hill Electrical and Electronic Engineering series, and I do believe I have some more books from the same series. So we'll, we'll see those perhaps in our next video. Uh, there's the side of the book. Uh, it's hard cover, of course. So there's nothing on the back. It's uh, missing its dust jacket. Um, and yeah, as I said, it's from the uh, the North Sydney uh, Technical College. Uh, that's what that says here. Uh, it's got some notes. Just uh, what does that say? Engineering electronics with industrial applications, and I'm not sure what that word is there. It's like central, but that doesn't make sense. I'm not sure what that says. I don't know what two six two six means. So uh, engineering electronics. And as I mentioned, look, the McGraw-Hill Electrical and Electronic Engineering Series with uh, Frederick Emmons Terman as consulting editor and some associate consulting editors. There you go. Now look at that. That's a long list of books. Shall we read it out? Why not? Let's see what's in the, uh, in the series, huh? So we've got uh, alternating current machinery, acoustics, Analysis of feedback control systems, theory and application of industrial electronics, synthesis of linear communication networks, volumes one and two, harmonics, sidebands, and transients in communication engineering. Of course, these days sidebands uh, they they talk about sideband attacks where you uh, you use like timing analysis to to infer what's in the cache, and you can read data out of other people's uh, processes using sideband attacks. So that's a that's a that's a bit of jargon that's still very current, uh, isn't it? Anyway, we've got uh, that, they'll be talking. I don't know when they're talking about sidebands here. Who knows? Harmonics, sidebands, and transients in communication engineering. So I don't know what sidebands means in their context. Anyway, uh, if we're if we're lucky, we'll we'll have a copy of some of these books and we might find out. Uh, I don't know. Uh, introduction to nonlinear analysis, fundamentals of vacuum tubes, control system dynamics, foundations of information theory, basic electrical engineering, electric machinery, basic electron tubes, fundamentals of television engineering, engineering electronics. That's what this book's called. Oh, there we go, that word. It's with industrial applications and control. Control, that was the magic word from the, the writing on the front cover. Sorry, yeah, I've lost my place. Um, we were talking about uh, engineering electronics. So this is called engineering electronics. And this one, by a different author, is also called engineering electronics. So they've got two books in the electronics engineering section called engineering electronics. Presumably they've got different subtitles, huh? Um, fundamentals of Electronic Motion, uh, Introduction to Electromagnetic Engineering, Engineering Electromagnetics, 
Fundamentals of Electrical Engineering, Electronics in Engineering, Transmission Lines and Networks, Antennas. Gee, I'd love to know more about antennas, but I'm I'm trying to steer clear of RF because it's a it's a it's a rabbit hole, and I I uh, I I'm trying to stay in digital electronics land. Anyway, uh, electromagnetics, analysis of alternating current circuits, general network analysis, electronics, pulse and digital circuits, introduction to electric fields, transient performance of electric power systems, engineering electronics. Is that the that is the third book called Engineering Electronics. Oh, this is Ryder. That's this particular book. Yeah, okay. So it's got a. Uh, so it's a, there's only two of them, and this one's the same one. That's the book we're reading at the moment. Then we've got uh, Electron Tube Circuits, Electronic Engineering, uh, Introduction to Electromagnetic Fields, Radio Electronics, Direct Current Machinery, uh, Electric Transmission Lines, Transient Electric Currents. Fundamentals of Electron Devices, Vacuum Tubes, Elements of Power System Analysis, Passive Network Synthesis, Electronic and Radio Engineering, Electronic Measurements, uh, Elements of Service Servo Mechanic, me serv Elements of Servo Mechanism Theory, <laughs> wow, Servo Mechanism Analysis, Alternating Current and Transient Circuit Analysis, Automating feedback control systems and th synthesis. I'm just going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. I'm back. So let's continue. Uh, we're up to the title page. Engineering electronics with applications and control. This guy's a PhD. Dr. D. Ryder. Dean of Engineering and Professor of Electrical Engineering at the Michigan State University. There you go. Uh, printed by uh, McGraw Hill Book Company Incorporated, New York, Toronto, and London, um, and it's uh, it's cancelled from the North Sydney Technical College Library. Published in 1957, as I said earlier. Uh, <coughs> there we go. Uh, and here's the preface. So we've got a preface from Dr. John D. Ryder. And we've got the table of contents, which goes for, what's that, four pages. And then we've got the introduction. And there's another uh, stamp from the library here uh, on the introduction. And then we've got the rest of the book. So uh, let's read the preface. Then we'll have a look at the uh, table of contents. And then we'll flip through this thing and, and see what's to be seen. <sighs> Electronics. Employing basic knowledge of the dynamics of electric charges and their physical behavior in conductors, circuit and network theory, electromagnetic fields, and feedback and control theory is profoundly influencing all areas of electrical engineering. Formally, somewhat restricted to the higher frequencies and to the transmission of information, electronics has now invaded the industrial and business areas and a broader viewpoint is needed. This text attempts to supply the basic knowledge required by those working in the broad non-radio portion of the electrical engineering field. Many arbitrary decisions have to be made to include or exclude materials since, when the radio portion of the field of electronics is rather specifically bounded, no such bounds have been found for the industrial or engineering electronics area. Because of this undefined breadth, it has not been possible to study applications in great detail, and this has aided in preventing the work from becoming a handbook of operation of specific circuits and apparatus. The first three chapters provide a survey of electronic devices and concepts for those without previous training. Fundamentals of semiconductors and the transistor are covered in Chapter 12. Throughout frequent re Throughout, frequent recourse is had to mathematics and circuit theory to provide a quantitative understanding of the subject. John D. Ryder, I guess back in 1957. I'm not sure when the transistor became commercialized, but uh, he spoke about it. It's in chapter 12, so we've already got transistors in 1957, so that's good. 
I don't know if we have much digital electronics, but of course uh, a transistor isn't simply a uh, digital device. It's, uh, it can be used to uh, make digital devices, but it's actually an analog device and you can use it of course for amplifiers as well as switches. Now here we are in the table of contents, so let's go through the contents and see what's in here. We've got chapter 1, uh, the atom and the electron. Oh sorry, the, the chapter 1 is the introduction. And then the, the topics are uh, the atom and the electron, uh, development of the vacuum tube, gas tubes, and solid state developments. Chapter 2, physical phenomena in electron tubes. Action of electrons in electric fields. Current flow in space. Actions of electrons in magnetic fields. Electrons in metals. The surface energy barrier and electron emission. Uh, thermionic cathode materials, thermionic cathode types, photo emission, secondary and high field emissions, space charge effects in the thermionic diode, current control by a grid, the vacuum triode, energy losses and cooling in vacuum tubes, ionization in gases. Chapter 3, the vacuum tube as a circuit element. Non-linear non volt amp, sorry, I should say, non-linear volt ampere characteristics, vacuum triode current and voltage notation, triode graphical characteristics and triode parameters, the dynamic transfer curve, graphical analysis of circuit performance, the voltage source equivalent circuit for a triode, the current source equivalent circuit, gain of an amplifier. Measurement of tube parameters, the tetrode, the pentode, the beam tube, the variable mu tube, self-bias of amplifiers, voltage sources, distortion of waveform, classification of tube operating conditions, the decibel in gain measurement, the cathode ray tube and oscillograph. Chapter 4. Small signal amplifiers as circuit elements. Basic amplifier types, coupling of cascaded amplifiers, input admittance of a triode as a grounded cathode amplifier, grounded cathode amplifier analysis, the cathode follower amplifier, design of cathode follower circuits, analysis of the modified cathode follower, the grounded grid amplifier, AC operation of voltage amplifiers. Chapter 5, Response of Small Signal Amplifiers. Frequency and Phase Response of the Grounded Cathode Amplifier. Further study of the frequency of phase response of the RC amplifier. Steady state decibel gain plots. RC circuits for alteration of bandwidth. Factors affecting amplifier bandwidth. Low frequency compensation of RC amplifiers. High-frequency compensation of the RC amplifier. <coughs> Pulse response of the RC coupling circuit. Relations between sinusoidal and pulse response. Square wave response and testing. Fourier series. Analysis of a recurrent rectangular pulse. Noise in amplifiers. Chapter 6, low-frequency power amplifiers. Output circuits for low frequency power amplifiers. Load line construction. Load line for reactive loads. The ideal class A amplifier. Power relations. Theoretical limit on class A efficiency. Determination of amplitude distortion. Intermodulation distortion. Choice of load for optimum power output. The distortion rule. The push pull amplifier. Bias, consider, uh, bias considerations in push pull amplifiers. Equivalent circuit for the push pull amplifier. General uh, uh, graphical analysis using the composite tube characteristics. The class AB push pull amplifier. The class B push pull amplifier. Design of class B amplifiers for large power output. Grid circuit power requirements. Signal sources for push-pull amplifiers. Chapter 7, Feedback in Amplifiers. 
Feedback principles. Negative feedback and gain stability. Negative feedback and distortion. Negative feedback and noise. Feedback measured in decibels and example. Basic negative circuits. Other feedback circuits. Positive feedback decoupling. Stability of feedback amplifiers. Further discussion of stability conditions. Direct coupled amplifier. Oh, sorry, this is chapter chapter eight. Direct coupled amplifiers, computing amplifiers, early direct coupled amplifiers, the resistance coupled amplifier, cathode coupling in DC amplifiers, the balanced push pull amplifier, cathode drift compensation, series cathode compensation, the bridge balanced amplifier, vacuum tube electrometers. Residual drift in direct coupled amplifiers. Chopper modulated amplifiers. Chopper stabilized direct coupled amplifiers. The operational amplifier. Use of positive feedback. Analog computation. Lagrange's equation for dynamical systems. The direct analog computer. Scale factors. Functional or operational analog computers. Function generators, nonlinear circuit elements, limiting currents, multiplying devices and circuits. Chapter 9 Switching Circuits, Digital Computation. Circuit elements, tubes in switching circuits, response of RC and RL series circuits, the time constant, the, differ uh, the differentiating circuit, integrating circuits. Clipping circuits, clamping circuits, clamping in the television system, the ringing circuit, the blocking oscillator, the time base or sweep generation for cathode ray tube deflection, simple RC sweep generation, thyration sweep generate. Oh, no, sorry, that's thyrotron sweep generators, triggered vacuum tube sweep generators, linearization and RC sweep other forms of time bases, sweep circuits for magnetically detected cathode ray tubes, the free running multivibrator, effective bias, synchronization of the multivibrator, the one shot multivibrator, the trigger or flip flop circuit, scaling circuits, decimal scaling circuits, the decade counted tube, the binary number system, Digital computers, computer input and output, memory or storage facilities, vacuum tube gating circuits, diode switching matrices, and or not circuits, addition logic. Chapter 10, power supplies and filters, voltage regulators, the half wave diode rectifier, the full wave rectifier, Ripple factor, the shunt capacitor filter, the series inductor filter, the L section or inductor input filter, the bleeder resistor and critical input inductance, capacitor input filters, voltage multiplying rectifiers, rectifier circuit design, voltage regulator VR tubes, vacuum tube regulators, AC regulators, voltage references. Chapter 11, Oscillators and Class C Amplifiers, High Frequency Heating, Waveforms in Class C Amplifiers, Analysis of Class C Amplifier Performance, Power Relations, The Resonant Load Circuit, Frequency Multipliers, Feedback in Oscillators, Circuit Criteria feed Feedback Oscillators, Basic Feedback Oscillator Circuits, Electron Coupling, Sorry, electron coupling crystal control, phase shift of oscillators, ultrasonic oscillators, electromagnetic fields in metals, skin effect in metals, induction heating of cylindrical bars, heating of dielectric cylinders or slabs, power required for rapid heating, heating power calculations, oscillators as high voltage DC sources. Chapter 12, Semiconductors, Transistors, Semiconductors, 
energy levels and conductivity in semiconductors, the PN junction, junction and point contact diode rectifiers, the point contact transistor, the junction transistor, transistors and vacuum tubes, four terminal networks, equivalent circuit for the common base amplifier, the common emitter circuit, the common collector amplifier, summary of transistor amplifier characteristics, graphical analysis of large signal transistor performance, bias and stabilization, cascaded amplifiers, frequency response of the RC amplifier, push-pull and complementary symmetry circuits, instability in point contact transistor circuits, transistor feedback oscillators, negative resistance oscillators and triggers, the tetrode transistor, large area rectifiers, thermistors. Chapter 13, photoelectric devices and applications. Light, cathode materials, the vacuum photoemissive cell, the phototube, glass filled phototube, oh sorry, <laughs> that's the gas filled phototube, phototube relays, Phototube circuits for measurement purposes. Use of modulated light. Electron multipliers. The photovoltaic cell. The phototransistor. Light amplifiers. Chapter 14. Power rectification. Arc discharges. Thermionic cathodes in gas discharges. Mercury pool cathodes. Mercury vapor tube characteristics and ratings. Arc back. Basic half wave gas diode rectifier. Full wave and bridge rectifiers. Parallel operation of gas diodes. Three phase half wave rectifier relations. M phase rectifier relations. Transformer utility factor. M phase rectifiers with inductance filters. Effective transformer reactants. Three phase bridge circuit. Double Y rectifiers. Polyphase branch connectors. Performance. Chapter 15 Power control and inversion. The thyrotron. Ionization and deionization times. Circuit, sorry, grid current in thyrotrons. The gas tetrode or shielded grid thyrotron. Bias control of average current. Phase shift control. Combined phase and bias control. The phase shifting bridge. Saturable reactor control. Pulse control of thyrotrons. The ignitron. Ignitron firing circuits. Controlled thyrotron or ignitron rectifiers. Control of alternating current. Ignitron ratings. Switching gas triodes and DC anode potential. Gas triode counting circuits. Inverters. The transistor inverter. Chapter 16. Relays, timers and resistance welding controls. The contact relay. DC operated time delay relays. AC operated time delay relays. Time interval measurements. The resistance welding process. Automatic sequence timer, synchronous weld control, follow up or trailing tube circuit, timing the weld, heat control, energy storage welding systems, the polyphase welding systems. <clears throat> Chapter 17 Electronic motor control, DC motor relations, thyrotron supply for the DC motor. Speed torque relations. Speed regulation by armature voltage control. IR drop compensation. Field weakening. Armature current limiting. Auxiliary controls. Speed control by tachometer. Control of low torque AC motors. Phase selective circuits. Chapter 18. Servo me mechanisms. Servo mechanisms and control. First order servo mechanism, second order systems, transient response of second order system to a step input, 
derivative control, error rate control, integral control, temperature regulator with integral control, sinusoidal response of a second order system, transfer function analysis, transfer function for multiple loop feedback, transfer functions of several circuits, transfer functions of several physical elements, AC motor servo system, stability, stability criteria, gain and phase margin, example further Nyquist plots, other systems. And then we've got an index on page 655, which I guess indicates how big this book is. It's just a bit less than 700 pages. Here we are in the introduction. So we might as well have a read of the first two paragraphs, huh? The science of electronics is fundamental to a vast area of electrical engineering. Certainly the development of this science must be given credit for the useful application of frequencies above a few hundred cycles and for the wide application of non-sinusoidal waveforms. Electronic knowledge is now employed in devices operating from zero frequency to tens of thousands of megacycles handling powers of microwatts to thousands of kilowatts and employing a great variety of the infinitude of waveforms. In this text is the proposed uh, pardon me. In this text it is proposed to emphasize the scientific principles of importance to the area known as industrial or engineering electronics usually associated with the lower frequencies and dealing quite largely with the signals and methods leading to the control of energy in some form, as contrasted with the concept of transmission of information more often associated with the field of radio. There we go. And then we're off. The atom and the electron. So we're going to start at atoms and electrons. And we're getting straight into some mathematics here. So we're talking about the charge of... Uh, of an electron which is 10 to the minus 19 coulombs and the mass is 10 to the minus 31 kilograms wow and then we've got uh, <coughs> we got a few more basic uh, equations to get us started and then we're off physical phenomena in electron tubes yeah. Looks like this book's uh, that's heavy on the mathematics, isn't it? That's cool. Straight into some calculus there. Looking at uh, grids of atoms here. I think uh, metals usually form those pretty uh, homogeneous kind of lattices, don't they? A couple of diagrams. Secondary emission ratios for a CS, CSO, AG surface, nickel, carbonized nickel. There you go. So it looks like they're looking at the, uh, at the conductivity of metals here. Talking about how different metals have different conductivity. Oh, look at this. We've got uh, a page that has been burnt. Fascinating. Can you see that? Look at that. It's uh, it's burnt. Wow. Isn't that odd? I wonder how that happened. <sighs> Up to chapter three, the vacuum tube as a circuit element. So there we go. Of course, vacuum tubes were current in 1957. Looking at uh, looks like frequency response. Is it? Oh, it's, uh, it's volts and, and current. It's not frequency response. And we've got a bunch of schematics, diagrams, a couple of equations. Ah. Chapter 4, small signal amplifiers as circuit elements. So those amplifiers there are made out of tubes. This is all tubes, page full of equations, more mathematics, more vacuum tubes, vacuum tubes, equations. Wow, got another chart. Uh, 
There's a couple of charts. What's this? EO. I'm not sure what EO is. I thought E was the uh, charge of an electron. I don't know. Output versus input volts for a cathode follower. E. I think it's E for voltage then. There you go. So it's a cathode follower. It uh, You put in uh, some voltage and you get out some voltage. But it's uh, it's not at... Uh, it's, it's kind of offset a little bit by the looks of it. There you go. Gee, we got heaps of uh, tubes and heaps of equations. Chapter 5, response of small signal amplifiers. Uh, these amplifiers are all made with tubes as well. I'm not sure what that is. I thought that was a, a, an, a meter. Is it meters? RC amplifier. I didn't know you could make an amplifiers with uh, RC. I thought you needed something like a transistor or an electron tube. Shall we go back and have a look and see what it tells us? Where was it? Here. Let's see what it says. Uh, okay. This is uh, figure 5.3. All right. So figure 5.3a represents the complete equivalent circuit for the triode amplifier of figure 5.1. All right. So this is figure 5.1. And this, it says, is the complete equivalent circuit for the triode amplifier. But I'm not seeing a tube in here unless those E's... Oh, that's that's a uh, that I don't know what that symbol is. Ah, oh, there we go. E G. It's not labelled here, is it? Anyway, it uh, it has got a tube in it, and that was the thing that I was confused about. So, uh, these amplifiers are based on. Um, uh, tubes, triodes. Hmm. Okay. Fair enough. You know, I have to say I'm glad that we uh, that we got rid of those tubes. Those they seemed hot and big and unreliable. Like light globes. I'm glad we've got LED lights these days. Light globes, they were awful, weren't they? They got hot and they broke after a couple of years. There's plenty of mathematics in this thing. Look at that. That's a monster. <clears throat> Calculating AH. I wonder what AH is. A for area. Probably not current. Current's usually I. Wow, plenty of mathematics in this book. The odd chart. Plenty of schematics. All with tubes. Tube, tube, tube. Looking at uh, some pulses there. There we go, we've got some pictures of our uh, cathode ray oscilloscopes by the look of it. They probably did that with the photo back in the day. There we go, we've got some uh, square waves coming through the oscillator, coming through the CRT scope. More tubes, more pulses, a couple of triangular waves, would you call them? No, you call this one a ramp, I believe. It ramps up and then it drops off. That's a square wave. And we're up to chapter six, low frequency power amplifiers. Again, made with vacuum tubes. There's some uh, tr uh, transformers in, in here, transformers, a couple of inductors, more charts. More CRT photos. Determination of amplitude distortion. The presence of harmonic or amplitude distortion in a power amplifier may be undesirable. The output current or voltage waveforms may be plotted from the load line and analyzed by conventional methods for harmonic content. However, it is possible to avoid the labor of plotting the waveforms by obtaining the magnitude of the necessary wave ordinates directly from the load line. And you need to do a whole bunch of mathematics to figure that out. 
and he is going to tell you all about it. Get a table here. What's our table? Determination of optimum load for the tetrode. We got uh, load in ohms, various currents. A. I'm not sure what A is. Power in watts. Uh, D. I'm not sure what D is. More tubes, more charts, more maths. Wow. Gee, I'm glad that uh, that we have uh, digital oscilloscopes these days because those cathode ray things. I don't think you could record. Maybe you could, I don't know. Actually, uh, a lot of electronics has changed, hasn't it? it? used to be very analog. Television, radio, all analog. Here we go. Chapter 7. Feedback in amplifiers. Negative feedback and gain stability. Yeah. I saw Dave Jones from the EEV blog sporting a t-shirt the other day. It said, uh, I only give negative feedback. And it was a schematic on his t-shirt of a amplifier with a negative feedback line. Mathematics, schematics with tubes, schematics with tubes, charts, mathematics, vacuum tubes. There we go. Chapter 8, direct coupled amplifiers. Computing amplifiers. You know, apparently that's why they call it an operation amplifier, because it does an operation like addition or integration, or that sort of thing. So that's probably what he's going to be talking about in here. Look at that monster. Wow. Cathode coupling in DC amplifiers. The push-pull amplifier. So this was published in 1957 and they already knew what the push-pull amplifier was. And here is one of them. The idea is that you push the positive part and you pull the bottom part and it uh, can be, I think it doubles the power for the same voltage. Except you've got to go negative for the bottom half but don't trust me I'm not an expert look at this thing that's a monster that's a multi-stage bridge amplifier with negative feedback wow oh here we go look they've actually got the triangle in there so uh, they already had that uh, that schematic symbol in 1957 I'm impressed I thought that would have been the dark ages, but uh, they already had uh, amplifier signals, so that's good. There's your bridge rectifier in there. Diode chopper or modulator. Of course, these days we just call it a rectifier. It's a full wave bridge rectifier, not a diode chopper or modulator. Why would they call it a modulator? I don't know. So, analog computation. The analog type of electric computer uses electronic amplifiers and provides solutions to mathematical problems in terms of a physical quantity, such as the angular position of a shaft, a voltage or current, or the position of the index on a scale. There you go. Lagrange's equation for dynamical systems. A little bit of calculus there for everyone. more uh, calculus. I want him to mention operational amplifiers. <sighs> Scale factors. There we go. Scaling with resistors by the looks of it. Function generators. That's cool. They were calling in function generators even back in 1957. 
Since analog computers are called upon to simulate and solve a wide variety of dynamic problems, it is necessary to be able to generate many driving voltage waveforms, either as time functions or as functions of other variables. Tapered or nonlinear wire wound circular potentiometers, as in figure 832, may be driven by a constant speed motor if a time function EO equals FT is desired or by a servo meter controlled by another variable Y if EO equals FY is the desired output. The method is limited to monotonic functions continually increasing or decreasing for which a suitable winding can be manufactured on a tapered card of which the sine and cosine are examples. There we go. CRO. CRO. It's cathode ray oscilloscope. Multiplying devices and circuits. There we go. I didn't I didn't see op amp. Did you see op amp? There we go. I'm surprised. That was uh, chapter 8. There's chapter 8. And in chapter 8... Hmm, I was expecting in computing amplifiers to see operational amplifier. But I didn't see it. Uh, there it is. Uh, we, we missed it. There we go. So it was there. The operational amplifier it was earlier in this chapter. It doesn't give you a page number. It was uh, operational amplifiers was section 811. I'm going to jump back to 811. It says 811 there, but it's, oh, it's different. This is 85. Ah, this is starting to be a bit of a bother. I just wanted to see what it had to say about operational amplifiers because I remember hearing just recently that op amps came from back here when they used to do computations. So they called them operation. Yeah, here we go. Chapter 811, the operational amplifier. Uh, many DC amplifiers are employed in performing mathematical operations such as summing, differentiation, and integration. When so applied, they are gener generally referred to as operational amplifiers. These operations may involve steady or slowly varying components so that DC amplifiers are required. Almost any combination of the principles previously discussed which leads to a linear, stable, direct coupled amplifier having an odd number of stages or equivalent phase shift combined with overall feedback of the proper nature may be employed. There you go. Such a combination is represented by the amplifier signal symbol of figure 822. Okay. With gain. Oh, there we go. So gain, A for gain, A for gain. There you go. All right, well, there we go. So I wasn't wrong about that. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? So uh, chapter nine, switching circuits, digital computation. So now we're talking about transistors, are we as switches or amplifiers as switches? Oh, no, that's literally switching. What are we doing? That's, that's RC and RL circuits, okay which are filters really, aren't they, I suppose. Um, yeah, okay. Clipping and clamping, I suppose. Uh, yep, clamping now. Okay. And uh, there we go, circuits with... Uh, okay, there's circuits with tubes still. Tubes, tubes, tubes. 
So digital electronics with tubes as uh, as the elements. Not seeing any transistors yet. This is all tubes. A couple of pictures on our CRO, our cathode ray oscilloscope. That looks like a multivibrator. Pulse width control. There we go. Tables. We've got some binary stuff going on here. The binary number system. Yeah, so we're talking about binary numbers. There we go. 1957. Digital computers. The desk calculator is an example of a class of devices operating as digital computers where the input and output are numerical digits in contrast to the analog computer in which the input and output are physical quantities. The desk calculator performs various arithmetical operations largely through an ability to add or subtract the human operator directing or programming the machine in such a way that through a sequence of additions or subtractions many more complex arithmetical operations are performed. There we go. Assuming proper mag machine operation, the accuracy of a digital computer is dependent only on the number of significant digits carried through the computation, and this number is largely fixed by questions of allowable complexity and cost of the machine. Human reading error and component calibration are largely eliminated by the digital form of the result. Well, they've got a lot to learn about software bugs, let me tell you. All of that was coming. Here we go. Functions of a digital computer. Input, output, memory, control, and the arithmetic unit. We call that the ALU, and it's pretty much integrated in the chip these days. Ah, still doing stuff with tubes. A couple of diodes in there. Addition logic. There you go. Here we go, chapter 10, power supplies and filters. The half wave diode rectifier. That of course there is that, that's just lopping off half the, uh, half the, um, the, the signal. And in fact, this is exactly how they demodulate an AM signal later. Just chop off the bottom part and then the, the size of the thing, that's actually the output. Kind of clever. Now this is a full wave rectifier, there you go some uh, some calculus there plenty of mathematics on that page more photos from our CRO cut in point and cut off point for capacitor filters cut in and cut off tube current waveforms not real interested in tubes these days. I think there is a, there's still a little underworld of people who service that old gear, radios and amplifiers and stuff from the 50s. I don't go much further back than the OG Xbox, which is about 2003, about 20 years ago. Adrian's Digital Basement, which I really enjoy watching. That uh, that often goes back to the 80s, 90s. My first computer was a 486 in 1993, maybe, 1994, something like that. Voltage references. So we're just working through the, the chapter on power supplies and filters. And the, uh, Chapter 11, Oscillators and Class C Amplifiers, High Frequency Heating. The conversion of DC power to high frequency power, either in oscillators or in amplifiers, is an important duty of the vacuum tube. 
Since very large amounts of power are handled in these circuits when applied to high frequency heating of metals and dielectrics, power efficiency is important and the tubes are operated under class C conditions. In this service, the tubes act as synchronous switches connecting DC source and load for small angles of conduction each cycle. The resonant loads then continue in free oscillation for the remainder of the cycle. A couple more charts here. I'm just having some trouble getting the pages to come open. Maths and tables and maths and tables. This is the power relations. There you go comparing two circuits and their, uh, their various attributes. Some mathematics there for us all. More, more tubes. Tubes everywhere. Schematics full of tubes. Wow, there's plenty of mathematics on that page. Wow. Use of depth of penetration as wall thickness of equivalent tubular conductor. So they're actually thinking about the properties of the conductors for uh, high frequency class C amplifiers. I think the class has to do with the, the voltage or the power. Class C is high, high power. Not sure what the actual cutoffs are. There we go, more mathematics, more schematics, couple of charts. What are we looking at here? Grid volts versus plate kilovolts. And some stuff. And now we're up to chapter 12. Semiconductors, transistors. Here we go. Okay. Look at that. That's the symbolic structure of a pure germanium crystal. So presumably they're going to dope it. Yep, there we go. So here's the doping with the n-type lattice and the doping with the p-type lattice. So here, there's the extra electron. Do you see that? That's the extra electron in the uh, n-type and it's n for negative. It's got an extra electron. And this is the, uh, the p-type lattice. It's got a hole so it's positive, it's missing one electron, it's got a hole, it's p-type. And then this has got an extra electron, so it's uh, n-type. There you go. And, uh, and, and they haven't shown you uh, what they're using for the doping, but in the, um, in the, uh, the n-type lattice, the, do the, 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 the central atom is a donor and it donates that extra uh, atom. And in the p-type, the, the central atom is called the acceptor atom because it, uh, it, it sucks one of the atoms out of, out of that bond there. And that's what makes a semiconductor. Cool. I'm going to read this bit. In usual temperature ranges, conduction due to impurity atoms present, present in the lattice is of greater importance than that due to intrinsic or thermally released electrons. <clears throat> A few atoms of an element having five valence electrons, such as phosphorus, antimony, or arsenic from the fifth group of the periodic table, may be introduced to the high purity germanium. The impurity atom will not be able to form a complete bond. Four of its five valence electrons will be found in the germanium bombs, bonds, but the fifth will be left relatively free to wander through the crystal and contribute to current conduction. Such conduction is then by negative charges or electrons and is called n-type, the impurity atoms being called donors. The situation is illustrated in figure 12a, which is what we looked at. And then they'll go on and tell you how it's the other way around for p-type, and off we go. Energy levels and conductivity in semiconductors. Uh, the electron energy level discussed in section 2.4 will be useful in further explanation of the operation of semiconductors as rectifiers and transistors. There we go. So off we go. 
learning about transistors. I wonder if he knew how important they would be. There's our collector and our emitter and our base, and they're using a germanium, which is, of course, popular back in the day, wasn't it? <coughs> of course, now it's all silicon, isn't it? Well, it's not all silicon. You can still get a germanium diode. I don't know if they use germanium in other semiconductors these days. I don't know. Uh, I think the Ford voltage uh, has uh, it has better properties. The germanium chews up less juice. I think. All right. Mathematics circuits. I haven't seen it. Uh, oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. So these are uh, bipolar. It's just as you'd expect. Usually these days, or often, you'll put a circle around it. But they're using the same. The emitter points in. So that's a um, that's a PMP, isn't it? Graphical analysis of large signal transistor performance. There we go. So it's looking at the current and the voltage and how they're related. More maths. Some uh, transformers over there. Interesting. Basic transistor feedback oscillators. There we go, we're at the end of that chapter. Now we're doing photoelectric devices and applications in chapter 13. We use, uh, in the in the Maxitronics projects I'm doing at the moment, we're using a, uh, a CDS cell, which is a photoresistor. But there is, of course, phototransistors as well, and that's what we've got here. Here we go. Germanium again. Fascinating. Power rectification. This is a, a cross section of an excitron rectifier. It's another tube. Geez, it's complicated. Look at that. Wow. I've got a photo. This is the first photo I've seen in this book. This is a rectifier room of aluminium reduction plant containing 24 6,000 amp, 750 volt DC rectifier assemblies and control. Look at that. Wow. We're nearly at the end of the book. A bridge rectifier. That's a bridge rectifier, but they're, they're not diodes, are they? Not diodes. Ah, well, we're nearly finished. There's inductors all over the place there. Ah, oh, see, they can cancel. They can use inductors to cancel out uh, various components, DC or AC components. Fascinating. Oh, I got a couple more photos here at the end. Power control and inversion. So this is Figure 15:2. A group of thyrotrons, and then uh, that's at the top. That's thyrotrons. And then uh, at the bottom is a modern type GL6087 thyrotron. 
6.4 amp average rating. There you go. Cut away of a type 5555 Ignatron, courtesy of General Electric Company. That looks like a multi vibrator again, doesn't it? There. Still looking at schematics with tubes in them. Oh, there we go. There's a, it's a transistor inverter. Fascinating. And then this is chapter 16 relays, timers, and resistance welding controls. I don't know what resistance welding means. Resistance welding is a process for joining metals, usually in sheet or plate form. The welding heat is produced by passage of an electric current through the materials at the point to be welded. The resulting, resulting weld is of high quality, having been subjected to a forging or pressure action from the electrodes while the metal was at welding temperature. Spot welding amplifies sorry, spot welding implies a succession of spaced welded spots joining the two sheets, whereas seam welding is produced by a succession of overlapping and time spots using water cooled roller electrodes. There you go, so it is literally uh, welding. Fascinating. And we're nearly there. This is chapter 17, motor control, electronic motor control. You, uh, if you use DC, sorry, use uh, uh, digital uh, circuits to drive motors, you, you usually have to, uh, to, to connect them with a relay or a, um, a transformer so that they, they get all of the energy they need. You, you can't usually drive them off the signaling, digital signaling circuits as they, uh, they can't deliver enough power. Ah, servo mechanisms. I wonder if they're talking, I suppose they're talking about servos as we know them today. Man, with his inherently slow responses, is a limiting factor on the speed and complexity of many modern devices, and the importance of automatic control to replace him is being increasingly realized. Because of the speed of operation of electronic devices, the electronic art has been frequently called upon in the design of automatic control systems, and these systems now constitute a very large class of electronic applications. Almost all such systems employ feedback, and the methods of analysis are closely allied to those of the feedback amplifier, as developed by Black, Nyquist, and Bode. Ah, Bode. That's where they get the Bode plot from, presumably. Because of this unity of thought and method, the analysis and design of server mechanisms and other control systems are an area of considerable interest to those working in the industrial electronic field. Servo Mechanisms and Control an open loop system is a control in which no check of output magnitude against input or no feedback is employed. For example, the generator to supply power to a lab laboratory is remotely installed with its field rheostat. Uh, the scale of the rheostat is calibrated in line voltage, but no voltometer is available. It is, is assumed by the designer that the voltage supplied to the laboratory is that indicated by the original calibration of the rheostat. 
Actually, such a calibration would not be reliable since the voltage could be affected by load, generator speed, field voltage and other variables. There is no check on the controlled quantity and the operation is that of an open loop system. There we go. Shall we keep going? Why not? Uh, if to the above were added a contact making voltometer in the laboratory to measure the load voltage with a follow-up device such that every movement of the voltmeter needle were duplicated by a motor driving the field rear stat so that the line voltage was maintained at a present value, then the operation becomes that of a closed loop system. In this equipment, a continuous check would be kept on the load voltage and any error or difference between the desired value and the actual value would immediately call for a cor correcting action. The term servo mechanism is ordinarily applied to a closed loop controller of position, be it rotary or translatory. Thus the device which would follow the motion of the voltmeter needle in the above example and cause a motor to drive the field rear stat to a corresponding position is a servo mechanism. There are two additional implications of this term, however. First, the usage implies that the energy required from the output must come from a local source and is not furnished by the input. In fact, the output energy required is usually much greater than the possible input energy, and the system is usually a power amplifier. Second, the system is caused to operate by an error signal or the difference or error between the input and a desired corresponding output. That is, if theta i is the input angular position at any instant and theta zero is the output, plus the theta o is the output angular position at the same instant, then the error is epsilon, which is theta i minus theta o. And off we go. So there we go closed loop, open loop, feedback. I think the feedback in a closed loop system is usually negative, isn't it? If it's positive feedback, it just blows up. There we go. A couple of uh, block diagrams showing how the systems are put together. Plenty of mathematics, a couple of charts. Nearly there. There you go. Almost there. Gain and phase margin. A better means of determining the closeness of approach to instability is available in the Nyquist plot of an open loop sinusoidal transfer function. And that's it. And we're up to the index. 657. And there we go. Oh, the Zener level on page 422. Did they already have Zener diodes? 422. <sighs> Here we go. If the reverse potential is increased beyond a certain value, the current increases rapidly. Uh, as can be seen in the figure at about 320 volts here yeah right oh I see this current is due to electrons being pulled out of the valence bonds by the high electric field present across the junction in the reverse direction beyond this breakdown point usually called the Zener level the voltage across the junction remains practically constant over a wide current range an obvious application is found as a voltage regulator there you go 
Well, that's it. That's the full book. So uh, that was Electrical and Electronic Engineering Series. <sighs> Done. This is the book. Um, up next, of course, will be the, the new book. Uh, the new book is going to be uh, The Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics, 4th edition. So if you're interested in that, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you soon.